We now have Moscow saying they have four people in custody for that horrible attack that took place on Friday at the Crocus City Hall concert venue just outside of Moscow. So I want to chat with you about that. But first, if you could just give us a brief uh, setup uh, for what it is you think happened at that venue. Yeah, so very clearly, um, the Islamic State Khorasan province, the affiliate of the Islamic State in Afghanistan, and that part of the Islamic State global network that is really focused on external attacks, has been conducting a successful terror attack in Moscow. They had been trying several times. Even the Russian security services said that since the beginning of March, they had arrested two cells from the Islamic State Khorasan province in Russia, one of which was arrested in Moscow uh, when they were trying to attack a synagogue. And then on Friday, the Islamic State was um, successful, entered a theater without any resistance. None of the videos show any kind of policemen or guards at the entrance of this rock concert in which several thousand people took part because there was a concert and a shopping mall. Went in, shot an uh, incredible amount of people who were, of course, all un unarmed, and then set the whole venue alight, uh, which killed even more people. So at the moment, I think we are at 137 dead people and 187 seriously injured. It took the Russian security services an hour to get to the venue, although the National Guard has a station about five minutes by car from the venue. But nevertheless, then three and a half hours later, the uh, security services told the world that they had arrested the four perpetrators of the attack 400, about 400 kilometers outside Moscow en route to Ukraine, immediately published some videos where these poor guys were you know, on the ground and um, without much prompting, confessed to just about everything um, uh, that they supposed to have done the last couple of days. And this morning, they presented the four, same four individuals now visibly heavily tortured, one unconscious, one very obviously missing an ear, um, uh, all bruised uh, um, very badly in court and said, these are the perpetrators, they have admitted to everything, it's Ukraine's fault. So why then would Moscow do this? Um, because all of the things that you pointed out have made it really difficult to believe that these are the culprits, even if they are, as you said, we may never know the truth, but why would Moscow then jeopardize this very important case or investigation by doing this? Because uh, unfortunately, within hours, this uh, you know transformed from an actual investigation into what can only be described as a propaganda spectacle. Um, President Putin took 19 hours to think how he's going to play this. Then he went on television and said, we have indications that all point to Ukraine. That was really the end of any objective investigation of this whole case, because now the president of Russia, who is a very powerful person, much more powerful than any other American president ever could be internally, has said it's Ukraine's fault. And so it has to be Ukraine's fault. And these individuals, if they are the perpetrators, will confess that it's Ukraine's fault. Hence, we will never really get any credible data out of the Russian uh, Secret Service or police forces that actually explains what went on. The main reason, of course, is that this attack was a massive embarrassment for the Russian security status and for President Putin himself. As I think now is very widely known, on the 7th of March, the U.S. government and the U.S. embassy in Moscow gave intelligence very publicly to the Russians and said within the next 48 hours, um, venues, large scale events, in particular concerts, are at danger of an attack from ISIL Islamic State Khorasan province. Putin went online, uh, went uh, uh, um, public, uh, uh, gave a speech and says, this is all blackmail from the United States. They're trying to look Russia, make look Russia bad before the election. And this is an, an attempt to interfere in the election. Absolutely nothing is going on here. So that means then if you're the police chief, for example, of Moscow, and you have large concerts, you cannot send policemen to guard those concerts because your president told you everything is fine. So you can't you know, contradict the president's words by securing the venues, which they subsequently didn't and now paid an incredibly high price for it.
and ISIS-K. They came out not long after the attack took place on Friday with a message saying this was our doing and that the individuals who had done it had escaped. We haven't, at least I haven't heard anything from them since then. Um, but um, what then does this sound like to you? Uh, is, does this sound like the way ISIS works or ISIS Corazon works? Well, look, I mean, the real interesting thing is um, they actually took uh, responsibility thrice, not once, twice, thrice, right? So in when this thing was go still going on, right, when it was not yet known that the perpetrators had escaped, Amak Media, which is the official, one of the official, in inverted comma, uh, propaganda channels of the Islamic State, put out that statement, we done it. Um, we killed Christians at a large number and the perpetrators escaped. At that time, it wasn't clear that they escaped. So someone knew something. Then when Russia came out with the first version that this is Ukraine, they actually published a profile of the four perpetrators, uh, admittedly face blurred, but a profile of them. And then when Russia came again out and said it's Ukraine, they actually then published a video filmed by the perpetrators while they were doing the attack all via IS propaganda channels. So, I mean, they really are trying to tell the Russians something, that it's not Ukraine, it's the Islamic State. Sometimes terrorists do terrorism. So, that being the case, and I keep going a little bit deeper each time you mention something, but that being the case, have we heard anything from the ISIS-K organization or uh, ISIS since these four have appeared in court? No, so far today, there is nothing new. Um, I'm also not sure because it's already quite unusual that ISIS would claim responsibility three times in a row. Um, this is, in my opinion, uh, the reason really behind all of this is ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and we discussed this previously on your program, uh, are under pressure to pull something off. Since October, they, justifiably, the world's attention is focused on Hamas, on Hezbollah, more recently on the Houthis, not on ISIL al-Qaeda. For global terrorist networks, in order to stay relevant, to get more supporters, to get more money from their supporters, they need to pull, up, or pull off something of significant size in order to make sure that they get the money again and that they're seen as relevant. For example, we had here in Germany five attempts in the last couple of years, four of which in the last eight months. In July last year, in December, at beginning of December last year, end of December last year, and last week, German authorities arrested ISKP cells inside Germany. So the, the group really tries to, you know, in multiple countries, there were arrests in France, there were arrests in, in the Netherlands as well. There were, as I said, two times arrests in Russia before this attack happened. They really tried on a broad front to pull something off. And that's why now, they cannot allow the Russians to make this into a Ukraine story. And the last thing, based on what you've seen and observed from the videos, from the information that's been available about this attack, um, how would you assess the skills or capabilities of these people that were involved in this attack? Well, I mean, they, they knew how to handle long, long guns, right? They obviously also knew how to handle rudimentary explosives and incendiary devices. So they had some kind of basic training. But when you look at the videos a little bit more closely on how they move, it's not really the highest trained fighters I've ever seen in my life. But if you're attacking a concert venue where everyone inside is essentially unarmed, you don't need to send your best special forces trained fighters in order to do a very horrific job. Right. Anything you want to add to this that I haven't asked you about that you think is important? Look, I mean, it's really important to stay critical from now on forward for anything that comes out of uh, Russia on this attack. Unfortunately, uh, the one positive aspect about each major attack is that everyone can learn from the mistake of the others, what went wrong. Where, where things missed? How can we pretend uh, protect our events in the future better? In this particular case, with that much wrong information, I mean, there's now Putin propagandists that say the Americans, yeah, predictably, the Americans instructed the uh, Ukrainians to do this. This takes away the one aspect 
um, that is important in, in each uh, terror attack that you learn from the others. And we have an Olympics coming up in Paris. We have a European football championship coming up in this month, uh, this summer in June and July in Germany. It would be really important to learn from the mistakes of the Russians. And usually everyone allows everyone else to learn um, after such an attack. But this is very unlikely to happen. Dr. Schindler, thank you again, as always, for your insight. Thank you so much for having me.